Greetings and welcome everyone to Sword of the Stars The Pit. Sword of the Stars The Pit is an indie roguelike game developed by Kerberos Productions. You can pick it up right now on Steam, Gamersgate and Green Man Gaming. There will be links to all of the stores in the description below. I've played this game for about 90 minutes and it's pretty amazing. Now, the tutorial here doesn't explain that much at all. It teaches you the very basics. But if you really want to learn how to play, I recommend going to the Steam Community Hub and looking at some of the guides there. They are so helpful, and they explain so much more in so much detail. It's amazing. So, here are your main three starting characters. You've got the Marine, the Engineer, and the Scout. The Marine is your basic badass. You can tell he's a badass because he's smoking a cigar, and that's always badass. He specializes in guns, and the Engineer specializes in computers. And the scout specializes in very uh, passive types of abilities that can help her uh, find out information about the world, essentially, and hack into stuff and lockpick stuff. Each of the characters have their own unique loadout starting off. The, uh, the scout will start off with lockpicks, for, lock for example, but the marine won't. So we're going to pick the marine just because he's the easiest. So now if we look at his inventory... We shouldn't see any lockpicks. Uh, nope, no lockpicks here, and that's because only the scout does. So that's something to keep in mind when choosing your character. So here is our first enemy. Now, before we get into the details of the game, you can see how, well, I'm not moving and neither is he. Why is that? Well, it's a turn-based game. You can see in the bottom left here, we have a set amount of moves that we can take. So we can move once, and the other enemy won't move. So if we see the time up here... Every time we take our amount of moves, then the time will go up one. So we've already got one used. So now if we move, there we go. So now the time should go up. Yep. And now it's time for us to start fighting the enemy. Now, there are multiple ways you can actually engage in the enemy. Let's first turn. You can actually... Um, this is actually something I recently found out. You can turn without it taking up any turns or moves. So you can constantly turn and get a better angle on the enemy. So we go, let's just face directly at him. Now we can just click him like that and then it'll shoot him or we could use the arrow keys to try and pos position it the cursor like that and something else that we can do is what the hell ah damn it a poison gas trap what a way to start it off there are traps in here which do get activated and they will poison you you have to find cures for that or you can just wait a set amount of turns for them to pass away now the third option to engage an enemy there's okay so to We've got the cursor, and we've got the, uh, the pointing with the mouse. The next one is by pressing F. So if we just press F, it will automatically target the closest enemy in range to you, in range to you and attack them. So we don't have to aim if we don't want to. Oh, there we go. Poison has been reduced to level 2, so it will do less damage to us now. So we should be less uh, horrible. So we're already getting quite ruined in terms of health. So in the... This, here, this little bar here represents our health, and as you can see, it's very low. So what we need to do is we need to use a Terran med kit. So now let's just quickly use that. When we use something, it will have a set amount of chance of success, which and the set amount of chance of success will increase with your respective skills. So let's just um, do that. Oh, that failed. Crap, that's not good. Um, let's uh, use it again. Uh, I think, yeah, it worked. Okay. Yeah, so now if we press C, you can see our stats right here. So let's go back, let's go down to medical. So right now we have a fairly low medical skill. So if we want to increase that, we will have to level up. And the way that we level up is by attacking enemies and getting XP like that. And there's also another way to get XP, which is by lockpicking items or repairing certain things. Now, you do have to reload your weapons that require ammunition. And each time you require, it'll take up a set amount of turns for you. So you've got to make sure that you you are ready. Now, you could just swap your weapons to, say, a, a blade, like here. You can cycle through your items by pressing tab to go forward, and then you can press control tab to go backwards. So there we go. Simple as that. So we don't even have to waste any ammunition. All right, so I don't want to walk up to this guy because, uh, you know, I'm afraid he'll attack me or something like that while I'm making my turn. So... Let's just uh, actually wait one turn by pressing X. If we press X, we don't have to do anything, and the t and we will take our turn. So there we go. Now he's close to us, and we can attack him. Simple as that. Oh, there's another one up here. So let's just wait him. Wait, and there we go. Simple. So it's very 
important for you to remember that you can wait turns. You don't actually have to keep moving, which could put you into the line of sight of an enemy. So, say for example that there's an enemy up here and you're here, well, you can just wait a turn and then have him walk all the way towards you and then you can attack him. It's, uh, it's a good way to strategically think about everything. See, just like that. If we had moved over here to here closer, he could have attacked us and given us quite a bit of damage. Dad, I keep activating traps. What the hell? There's actually, that's actually another point. If we were to say, be the scout, we would have a lower chance of activating traps than we otherwise would as this character. Alright, so that guy's gone very far away. Let's zoom out by pressing Z, and then we can see a little bit better over here. So we can't see that well, and moving our guy around doesn't help. He's covered in the fog of war. There we go. Okay, so now we can see him. There we go. So now we have leveled up, and we've also found the exit to the level. But before we exit the level, let's level up. Okay, so here are all of our skills, as you saw before. So now we want to increase medical so that we can, you know, uh, use med kits more efficiently. Let's also say upgrade lockpicks, as well as... Well, I suppose we can do the pistol or the blade. I'll go with the blade. There we go. So now, might, finesse, and brains, they all add up to this own little type of experience and it helps you make your character more personalized. Might, for example, will increase the amount of food that you can take. So see how it was 700, is now 710. We increase again, 720, and now 730. There we go, very simple stuff. And you also want to make sure that you always level up as soon as you can, because if you don't, and you go, like say if we're level 2, and we still hadn't, and we get all the points for being level 2, and then we go to level 3, those points won't stack up as far as I know, they will just disappear, so you will only get the points to level up if you were just, as if you had just turned to level 3, so you will have missed out on those skill points to add, which can be a bit of a shame. It's very annoying, and trust me, when I found that out, I, I was furious, I was like, wait, hold on, what, it doesn't stack up? Because, because like, I had skipped maybe like, a, like, three levels or something like that, and then I realized, oh, it doesn't stack, fantastic, so, that was amazing. Alright, so you see what this character here has just dropped. That's meat. Now, hold on, what, is, what else is this? There's optics. Okay, also, um, suppose I should mention it. You can pick an item up by pressing G, or you can press Control and G together to look at the items all together and decide what you want, rather than just spamming G and picking it all up at once. So we want the raw meat times two, but I don't really know what the optics for, but you know what, I'll take it anyway. So now... The, oh, hey, that door just increased my health. That's actually something important. So doors can give you negative or positive traits. So let's say, for example, that I walk through the door. Well, it could activate a trap or it could just kill you. Well, not kill you, but it could harm you quite a bit. And that would be bad. So you want to, So there's this real risk versus reward of walking through doors. It's crazy how detailed they've made just walking through a door, and how it's like this constant tension of being like, oh god, will I die if I walk through this door? What's going to happen? And then he's like, oh hey, no, I actually got increased health. That's really nice. Now, we're using the assault rifle right now, so if we were to, say, select this character, we could also hold down control and then use the cursor to select another character. The reason we can do this is because the assault rifle shoots in bursts. So just like that, we have attacked multiple enemies at once in one turn. So we normally, if we were to just press F, it would unload everything into one character, like that. But since we are holding down control and targeting them, it will... I'm choking, apparently. Yeah, we can... Since we are using control, we can just manually aim at each of those bursts onto something else. So like, now we've got two shots onto him, we could also just I don't know, shoot it here. Like that. See, now we just shot that wall, that thing, for no real reason. What is this? I don't know, some sort of monument thing? Not quite sure. Okay, whoa, so here are a lot of enemies, so this is the type, this, these are the kind of situations where this is really useful. So there we go, now we've got quite a bit of damage done on three of, on um, two of those, actually, well, not quite a bit of damage, we killed them, so, yeah. Um, so now we can just swap to our blade, and then, just simple as that, now we kill them. So it's nice to, it's a very strategic sort of game, you can think about these types of things, and engage in actions as you think about it. Let's actually wait this turn. There we go, thank you. What have you got for me? Poison gland, okay. You can also interact with the environments by pressing space. So see this stasis pantry, we can interact with that, or we can interact with this thing. So actually, hold on, before we do that, we wanna get rid of the monster over here, because if we don't, then they will interrupt our little attack and kill us, or not kill us, but harm us while we're doing it. Damn it, I didn't wanna do 
Is he still alive? Oh no, it's attacking the door. Damn, why is it why is it doing that? That is weird. Um, okay, actually, I suppose that's because it'll destroy it and make it so that you won't uh, be affected by the traps. Or something like that, I guess. What have we got here? A purifier. Neat. Now let's do the stasis pantry. 7% of chance. Okay. This is actually quite dangerous because uh, if you fail to hack certain things, they can actually end up harming you or being just really bad in general. So you want to make sure that you're at quite high health before you do it. Otherwise, you might die. And then you'll actually get an achievement, which is pretty funny. They'll, the You get an achievement for dying. Oh, great. A an alarm has been triggered. So that's what I'll say. That's what I meant when I say like you'll get some bad things happen if you fail to hack something. Okay, cool. So now we've just successfully done successfully done that. Now let's take a look at our map by pressing M. So this will show us where we have been, but the black areas show us where we haven't been. So we haven't been up this way or through this way. So let's head that way. Before we do that, let's actually reload our weapon and then take out this little guy. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to get rid of you. There we go, okay. Let's see where are we headed. Let's go through this little door. Oh, there's a bad guy. That's not good, okay. All right, well, where's my blade? There it is, thank you. Uh, now, actually, this is a good time to show you. There's this little uh, quick hotbar type of thing. You can equip items that you want to use by dragging and dropping them into there. Actually, hold on, I wonder. Could you... No, it doesn't seem like you can press... It doesn't seem like you can just select them and then press... The number to go in there you actually have to drag and drop them so let's put our assault rifle there our pistol is number three and let's do the med kit as number four just because i'll probably die so that's important there we go now it's just automatically selected like that so we don't have to cycle through all of our weapons to get there we can just press three and then we are on the pistol simple as that goodbye thank you and now we are leveled up sweet let's continue doing might so now we have 760 food and that we can get out up to and where's the pistol upgrade? Uh, traps. That's actually going to be helpful so we don't accidentally activate traps that will kill us. Blade as well. And pistol. Sure, seems about right. Now, food is basically an important element to this game because you need to eat, otherwise you will die. It's, um, think Minecraft, essentially. You want to go find an area, a cooker, a kitchen, so you can make some food that you can eat. And then, ah, oh, damn it, it's locked. Can I unlock this one? Yeah, so you want to try and find a kitchen so you can make yourself something to eat so you don't starve to death, essentially. Because if you do starve to death, well then, <laughs> guess what happens? Spoiler alert, starving to death causes you to die. I know, it's crazy. Where the heck is the kitchen in this place? There doesn't seem to actually be one. Hold on. Maybe I missed it. Let's uh, just walk around and pick some locks. Hmm. That's not it. Uh... It doesn't seem to be a kitchen on this floor, so every time you come to the... F I believe this game is randomly generated, so you can't expect everything to be in the exact same place, so that's a bit of a... Well, not really a bummer. That actually gives it, like, an amazing amount of replayability. So if you're into, like, roguelikes, I could recommend this game. It is a bit on the easy side, that I re I think, but, um, of course, that's only on normal. They might have uh, made it p uh, planned for you to play on difficult, or insane difficulty setting, rather. So it doesn't look like there is a kitchen around here, which is a shame. So let's just head to the next floor. Now, actually, before we do that, I want to show you all, show off this bio mod. The bio module is designed to alter the function of a weapon in a positive way. Unfortunately, subcolored bio mods have malfunctioned, so you don't, so you won't know if this is this one is good or bad until you identify it or try it. We can add it to our assault pistol or assault rifle. I'm gonna. Okay, so that was a bad one. So the damage is now reduced by 10%, which is fantastic. Now, after you've placed your bio mod onto it, you have one of um, you have one of five uh, bio mods that can be equipped. And then after you reach the maximum, I believe that's it. You can't equip any more to that that item. So I think it's actually quite possible for you to get negative fifty percent damage on a weapon, which would just be awful. But this game, this game, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in this game. This game just loves to kill you. But it is a like I said, it is a fairly simple game, and I suppose that is intended to... Be, that is an intentional design choice, because the art style represents it, how it's very cartoony, and, you know, it looks very nice. It looks like, you know, a basic Saturday morning cartoon show of sorts, where you where you just look at it, and it's like, oh, that's really cute and adorable. 
Like, look at that rat. It's not that ugly. It's quite ugly, but not that ugly. So you're not that afraid of it. So you, so it feels kind of welcoming. It's kind of. So, but so I believe that's why it's you know that's why the art style is as it is. It's supposed to represent that this game isn't intended for the hardcore players. No, no, no. This is actually intended for those who are more needing an introduction to the roguelike genre, who are like me, who aren't really good at them. Like, look at this little guy. Look at the maintenance bot. Let's actually zoom in on him. See him? Isn't that fucking adorable? Ah, what a shame. Now, over here is the console. We can retrieve um, certain information about the world if we hack this successfully. Hopefully we can. We have a 41% chance to do it. There we go, okay, so we've got history here, Const oh, that's actually something I've encrypted in the previous um, game, so it stays there, that's neato. So, construction complete, R, B, emergency rations, that's all we've really learnt. And now in this one, we have to decrypt it in order to find out what they mean, we have a 58% chance of succeeding, and wow, that was easy, it was very quick. System, species has colonized planet surface, level 1, 4. So we've got lots of um, static here, really, so we can't really read it. But we do get a slight hint of what has happened. Basically, just shit has gone down. That's what I've gathered throughout this game. There's an opening cutscene which kind of explains it. And basically, uh, whoops, I'm out of ammo. Let's actually, yeah, use, use that. Out of ammo. Damn it, reload. Where are you running, boy? Come back. Rabbit bat, come back. Thank you. Yeah, basically, shit has gone to hell. You need to go all the way down to the bottom of this, air, this whole ship in order to find a cure, or what you think to be a cure, for this disease of sorts. That's pretty much all I've gathered. I haven't been following the story too much, so you'll have to forgive me. So now, um, I believe I was talking about food before, and how we have to find a kitchen. So yeah, this is your little food meter. Once it empties, you'll die, and you'll need to eat food in order to increase it, so that you can carry on living. And that's what we need to find, a kitchen. There are recipes that you can find for certain food items, or you can just smash things together and hope for the best. That's generally what I do. I've actually found one recipe um, like that. Although you could just be a cheat and look on the Steam guide forums for how to, um, for what to cook and then just do it that way. Uh, let's use a blade on that robot. Get out of here, pal. Come on, please. Thank you. Alright, yeah, I don't think there is a kitchen this way. So we've already been this way, so now we go, how we, ha we have to head south. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do in this game. It does take a while to get going, really, in terms of difficulty. It's not really difficult. It's only really difficult, I find, when you run out of ammunition or something like that. What's in here? Anything? Oh, sweet. An alpha key. Sweet. Damn, you know I'm alpha. Actually, uh, let's not do that. There we go. Had to wait my t had to wait that turn so that guy would get closer to me so I could attack him. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully it doesn't deactivate. Uh, okay. Yeah, lucky that it didn't actually kill me, which was fine, I suppose. Actually, hold on. I need to show off a little feature here. Where is an enemy? I hear him. Ah, there's two of them. Just what I needed. Let's wait until they get close to me. You both missed? Are you kidding me? You guys suck. Okay, there we go. Now, you saw the words blade damaged there. That basically means... That, well, your blade is being damaged. After a set amount of hits, it will lower in terms of durability. And after it hits zero, it will be destroyed. So you will need to find repair modules around the around the world in order to repair it and bring it back to top condition. And then you'll be able to, you know, use it again and attack people. Now, you just need to start hitting me, pal. You're not even hitting me. You're just walking around me. That is not how you're supposed to do it. Okay. Yeah, just a bit more. Okay, whatever. Good enough. So now you see here in the bottom left thing, my health is, ha I've lost a bit of health, but if, say if I was to not use this med kit and I wanted to increase my health, how would I do that? Well, you would press control and X, and this allows you to start resting. It will take up turns, so everything will continue as if it was in real time, and enemies can find you, so you want to make sure you're in a safe place when you're doing this, preferably in just a whole level that you've already explored and emptied out. But if not, then you can just um, wait in a like somewhat secluded area and hope for the best. Because if you're really low on health, it can be the difference between life and death. Also, if you do start waiting, you won't be able to, to stop waiting until you have reached full health. Or I believe until you get attacked. I'm not 100% certain on that. Actually, we've already been up in this area. Actually, hold on. We haven't explored this section. What's up here? There's no... 
Oh, that was <laughs> that was completely pointless. God damn it. I thought there would be like some sort of super hidden secret up there that explains everything, but nope. It's just a just gets me to go right back to where I was. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's just get rid of these guys. My blade gets damaged once again. Jeez, where the hell's the kitchen supposed to be? Trap increases your speed. Oh, sweet. So now we can move faster. I believe that will give us more turns. Yeah. In the move section, now instead of saying two, we have four. So now we can move four times. I believe that also means we can start shooting things more often. I'm not 100% sure. So yeah. Let's actually just uh, put that there. Uh, I don't think so. No, it just, if you start shooting, it takes all of your turns, it looks like. Okay. Here's the floor exit. Where's the... Okay, we haven't explored to the right of here. Maybe there's a kitchen somewhere around here. Is there... Really? No kitchen at all in this place? Fucking ludicrous. Oh my goodness. Really? Okay. I just freaking love the fact that you can press F and it'll auto-target on stuff. That is just amazing to me. And oh, let's actually rest while we're here since we're poisoned and might as well. Like, the reason I find it so amazing that you can just press F in order to auto-target is the fact that I played for like 60 or so minutes before finding that out. I actually think the tutorial tells you it, but I just was like, whatever tutorial, I don't need you, I'm a cool guy. I may have never played a roguelike before, actually no, I've played one roguelike before, and that's about it, so maybe I shouldn't be so cocky. <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, jeez, when is this poison going to- yeah, there it is, jeez. Okay, all I had to do was just mention the poison. And so, yeah, now you can't do anything. See? Like, I'm trying to move, pressing Wacid, arrow keys. That's just actually the target thing. So now we just have to wait until we reach full health. Now, this is a really risky idea if you're low on health. Because, well, if you're low on health, that means your food is just going to keep draining and draining and draining and draining. And, well, if it keeps draining, then eventually you might die. So you might end up be trying to increase your health in order to make it so that you don't die, but then your food will go low, and then you'll be like, oh, hey, wait a second, that just killed me. So, yeah, there is this real risk versus reward type of thing going on with resting. You want to make sure that you have enough uh, food in order to survive the rest, but you also want to make sure that you're in a safe place, because if, because if you are in a safe place and you survive with enough food, then that means you're on full health, so that's your reward, basically. Oh, geez, there's a... Noble protein? Whatever. And goodbye to you as well, pal. You missed like half of those shots, miss. No, no, over half of those shots. My goodness. Nothing. Fantastic. Can I. Alright, let's try and fix this stuff. We're almost level 4. That's neato. Jeez, I'm just breaking everything. Electronic skill 10. Jeez, this just isn't going to happen. Actually, what is great about this game is that there's always a set chance that you might, you might do it. I don't think you can ever have a 0% chance of succeeding. So that's what's great is that, like, um, there was this one time I was trying to open up a console in this thing to find out the story of the game. And it was like, oh, you have a 1% chance of doing this. And I was like, 1%? Jeez, I'm never going to be able to do that. I click it and it's like, oh! <gasps> I did it! I really did it! And it was quite amazing. Quite amazing. This game is really good in the fact that you have those, like, kind of human stories of those, like, yeah, I I went above the odds, man. I did it. I am the amazing man and stuff. And finally we found a fucking kitchen. Jesus Christ, this took forever. Oh, first of all, now we just need to kill these guys and then we can be on our way. Can I don't have any rifle rounds. Jeez, I'm just gonna have to use my blade on them. Sweet! I can level up. And also, leveling up will increase your health to max, so you can use that as a nice little way to cheese being low on health. So if you're about to die, and it's like, oh god, what do I do? Was it Increase your health, and it's as simple as that. Alright, there we go. Increase our finesse once again. So now we can increase lockpicking, or something else. Let's do traps. Sure. Medical. And that's it? Okay, then. Let's get rid of these. Oh my god, there's a guy behind me. I didn't even see that guy. I should probably make sh make sure to remember the whole moving thing. That's important. Oh, let's just attack that guy. There we go. Easy done. Now we have the cooker. So you see here in the left side, you have your recipes. And it basically what it will be. So if we... This is cooked meat. So to make get cooked meat, we have to use raw meat and then cook it. Who would have guessed? That's insane. So now we have... Raw meat, let's just click plus to put that in there, and I believe we can also use a scent gland in order to attempt um, an unknown recipe and craft it. Hopefully this will actually work. There we go, we got pungent meat, a delicious piece of meat cooked with delicious aromati aromatics. 
Sweet, so now we just pick it up and we've got our own pungent meat. Let's just, uh, eat. Oh, we got a bio mod? When the hell did we pick that up? I don't remember. Alright, let's eat it. So now, if you look down here in the left, the bottom left, rather, you can see our food meter. Now, if we eat it, it should go up. There we go, simple as. Now, let's just cook some more stuff. Uh, let's do more pungent meat type of stuff. Yep. So there is a set chance of doing it there, so that you can fail at cooking meat. And it looks like that cooker has been burnt out, so we can't use that anymore. That's a shame, since we're still pretty low on uh, food. We've only got how much? 456 out of 790. Is that 90? Yeah, 790. Alright, now it's time to try out this bio mod. Let's add to the assault rifle. Penetration increased by 5. That's really neat. I'm not actually 100% certain on what penetration does. I think it just allows you to attack people behind someone more easily or something like that. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure. Damn it, I locked myself in here. Actually, hold on. Here's a little uh, ammo crate here, which we can get ammo from if we're lucky. Yes, we got it. Sweet. A fuel cell. That's used for laser type of weapons, which we actually haven't found. And rifle rounds. Sweet. So now we can reload our rifle and actually make use of it once again. Now, I uh, I believe there are 10 levels or so in this game, so we're on subfloor 4, so we've got about 6 or so left, something like that. Actually, ah, oh shit, we're out of ammo. Oh, come on! It's bullshit. Oh, well, it's time for us to just go back to the good old trusted blade. We can use our fists, which are somewhat useful, but they deal, like, very little damage. So this late in the game, like, it's like, no, there's no point. Maybe in the first level you could reach it, but, yeah. Like, yeah, just look how little damage that did. So it's like, just might as well use the blade or something like that. I actually haven't tried specializing in a melee build yet, so maybe that's something for me to do one of these days because this game does have a lot of replayability like I said at the very start of the video there are three different characters that you can choose who each specialize in something different and each of those different characters then can just sub specialize in other different things and it's just like holy crap there's so much potential replayability in this game you can just keep playing it for hours and hours and hours like um one of my friends actually managed to get so enthralled in this game they actually played for three hours straight and it was amazing it was like Jesus Christ how did you do that Okay, so we've just found a little uh, key from this robot that... We just found a key from the robot that dropped it. <laughs> Can't talk right now, apparently. And that will allow us to just exit and enter through any doors. We no longer have to try and lockpick them in order to open them. We'll just automatically go through them using the key, which is very nice, very easy. Let's 1% chance. Oh, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, we did it! You open the pantry, but trigger an alarm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I got a sea cucumber for it. Apparently, that's an odd thing to acquire, but whatever. I, I opened it, man. I did it all by myself. Oh, man, I'm awesome. Okay, so what else is here? A ruined locker and a damaged locker, so we can pry it open. Let's do that. Damn, uh, jammed. Okay, well, I'm going to try finding the next... Oh, okay, the floor exit. Yeah, as I was going to say, like... I believe that's really everything that I have to talk about this game. It's just really good, very fun. You can purchase it on many retailers right now. Each There should be a link to them in the description. And I think, yeah, that's about it. We've been playing for quite some time, so I think it's about time we just stopped. So on that note, thank you for sticking around, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And GG. Actually, before we stop, let me just kill this robot first, and then I, I have something else to actually mention. Fucking robot, stand still. Actually, I don't even care about that one. So now we can click Save and Exit and Stop. But if we click load game, we can actually continue on with our game straight back to where we left off. So, so that's nice for them. So if you don't, if you want to continue playing where you are, but you're like, oh, I'm so exhausted, man. I got to go do real life related things. You can actually stop. It's actually something that a lot of roguelikes don't have. They have this, most of them have this feature where it's like, oh, well, if you start playing, you better finish it, man. Otherwise, you know, might as well just kill yourself. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a bit ridiculous. But thankfully this has it. So that... I suppose that does show a bit more how it's more welcoming to more new people of the genre, which is very nice. So, um, yeah, anyway, this has been Sword of the Stars The Pit. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And GG.